Let's jump to this viral story. This one's so good. Ladies and gentlemen, we have this from the Daily Mail. Pregnant New York City nurse accused of taking a city bike from a black man outside a hospital is named as friends start GoFundMe to pay her legal bills and lawyer shares receipts that proves the bike was hers. All right. Here's the story. A viral video over the weekend showed a white woman yelling for help as some black teenagers surround her. And one guy has his hand on the bike saying, this is not your bike. This is my bike. They started claiming that she was racist that she was trying to steal the bl- the bike from this young black man and that she was putting his safety in jeopardy. The hospital suspended her pending an investigation. We have this tweet from Ben Crump. He said, this is unacceptable. A white woman was caught on camera attempting to steal a city bike from a young black man in New York City. She grossly tried to weaponize her tears to paint this man as a threat. This is exactly the type of behavior that has endangered what? so many black men in the past. The first thing I noticed when I see this is that she's actually on the bike. <laughs> she's, literally on the, she's literally on the bike and he's not. And he's grabbing the bike and laughing. So how is it? So these city bikes, the way they work, they're in the rack. You walk up, you scan the QR code and it unlocks the bike and you can take it out. How is it that he walked up, did not get on the bike, scanned it. Then did she run up at this pregnant woman? She's six months pregnant, by the way. Did she run up and jump on the bike and try taking it from him? That's what Ben Crump is arguing. So her lawyer, so this is the story that was going out. Not only did they go, they put out a story saying that she was a racist trying to steal the bike from this black teenager. Journalists went to her home in New York City and started going to her neighbors and and saying, look, this is your neighbor. This is what she did. What do you think? And there are these people being like, wow, that looks racist. I can't believe she would do that. (laughs) Think about how nightmarish it is to live in one of these places. I can't even imagine wanting to live in a place like that where you have to worry about, uh, the media going to your neighbors accusing you of racism and and a totally fabricated story. Ben Crump is the most incredible race hustler I have ever seen in my life. That dude is shameless and he he just gets on any 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 court case or whatever that he can. He's just right there planting his uh his flag looking for them dollars so wait so she had the receipts that showed that this was her bike this guy was trying to take it from her on what basis did he decide to report that she was stealing the bike from him just the picture he saw the picture and said well well she has the no, bad no, no. they filmed it okay they they filmed her and and said like this is, this is brilliant stuff this is con level mm-hmm. brilliant grifting when you're committing the crime accuse the other person of committing the crime and film them and then if they don't give you what you want, you can upload the video and make them the bad guy. That's rules for <laughs> radicals, right? So I, I was, Accuse your opponent of what you're doing. I was talking about this when I, I, I did a segment for my morning show, an old con trick called a reverse pickpocket. What you do is you take a wallet with a night with you put your ID in it, like a, an old dummy ID, and then maybe some, I don't know, a couple bucks or something. You slip it into the bag of or bag or pocket of someone else, then accuse them of robbing you. And that this gets other bystanders or even the police wow. to rob them on your behalf. So what happens is you say, help, that person just robbed me. And they took my phone. They took, they, like, took my, they took my wallet. And then we'll, mm. phone's hard because. Yeah, yeah. But if you it. say they took my wallet, you can say they took other things too. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so the way the con would work is you drop the, the dummy wallet in their coat pocket or something. <gasps> then you call the police or you, you ask for help. When they, when they say, look in his pocket, the, the, the victim is going, what are you talking about? I didn't do anything. And they go, empty your pockets then. The person pulls a wallet out of their pocket. There it is. That's my wallet. Open. It's got my ID in it. When they open it and your ID's in it, they say, boom, this proves it. And I say, and my cash, I had 40 bucks in there. No, there's no cash in there. Where's my 40 bucks? Then they take the 40 bucks from the victim and give it to you. You can actually get police to arrest the victims. And then they'll often just be like, here's your cash, sir. Sorry. It was an old con people used to pull. And there's sophisticated versions of it, too. They wait till someone leaves an ATM, and then people will leave the receipts at the ATM showing how much money they have on them. Then your buddy reverse pickpockets. Then you call the police and say, that person did it. The wallet on them is proof. The cop doesn't even need to get a statement or any evidence. The wallet on them is proof enough, and the cop will say, upon stopping the perpetrator, we found the wallet in question, proving that the, the, the theft took place. We returned the money to the victim. Wow. Jeez. Crazy, right? This is what these guys are it's basically brilliant. doing. They're, they're trying to, you know, here, here's what I think they were trying to do. When this, this happens a lot with these, with these bike share things, you unlock the bike with your phone and then you ride it around and it charges you, I think per hour, or you can be a member or something. Mm. So what they'll do is they'll wait for someone to unlock a bike, take the bike from them, and then 
bike's theirs. Yeah, bike's on them. Because the bike doesn't have a camera on or anything like that. Like, right. So you can't you can't track. And now if 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 I use my phone to unlock a bike and they take it. It's all on you. All you on me. You paid for it. That's right. I paid for it. Wow. Could, I think they were trying to steal the bike from her. That makes and sense. And to get away with it, they said, she's stealing the bike from me. And it actually worked for a second until she was able to publish the receipts proving it was actually her bike they took from her. Wow. Crazy, wow. right? That's that is really crazy. Who wants to live in this place? This is this is in New York. Hustler's gonna hustle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at this. This is, uh, what is it? It's right by, just just north of Union Square. They can reveal the nurse's city bike receipts, which her lawyer claims proves the number on the handlebars of the bike she was clutching in the footage. So you can see in the picture, 5603915, and they published the receipt, 5603915. Wow. Welcome to, to, the, to the, the new country, I guess. Well, he also immediately took it to not just a race baiting place, a racist place. She's weaponizing her white woman tears. Like, you mean... She's crying because someone's trying to steal her bike from her. I don't think she was really crying, though. It does seem fake. Like, they accused her of fake crying. And the reason I think a lot of people cited against her is that she's screaming for help. No one helps her. Then she grabs his phone. Then they grab it back. Then she starts crying. And then the guy behind her goes, get a different bike. And then she just gets off the bike and stops crying. So I kind of feel like she wasn't as distressed as she's making out to be, but she was still the victim mm. trying to figure out how to win this in some way because she doesn't have the physical ability to do so. Mm. And part of me is just kind of like, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it, guys. She lives in New York. The likelihood that a woman, a millennial woman in New York voted conservative or for law and order is almost zero. Mm. She likely, but, but you know what? I'm hoping it's stuff like this that wakes people like her up, right? It's true. That's um, what you hope for, but it never never seems to that's shake That's why I don't reality. live there. Yeah. That's why I decide not to live in these places. We we keep saying over and over people should get out of New York City, get out of the cities and stuff. I mean, every day you see more and more people that can't leave speaking up and saying things like I miss Rudy Giuliani like we saw that <laughs> woman today and yep. and you know the people that are on the uh the subway are happy that the guy saved them because there are people that can't leave and it's it's you know, hard for some people to just be like, oh, I got to up and, you know, if you've got family or if you don't have a lot of money or whatever, there's a million reasons people could be attached to, to a city. But when you hear the average person that's stuck and can't leave start saying, I miss the guy that was the law and order guy that has also been basically lambasted for the past six, seven years in the, in the media because he supported the wrong president you know when you've got all of that propaganda but new yorkers are still like i remember what it was like when giuliani was the was the mayor and i want that back you know you get people saying things like they want michael bloomberg back and that that that's really the population speaking about what they want you know i, I can't imagine what it's like to be stuck there and i feel i feel terrible for the people they, that are. they launched a gofundme for her and uh i think she's going to be in for a rude awakening Mm. when GoFundMe bans their 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 fundraising effort because yeah. GoFundMe is the left and Give Send Go is the right. Mm. This woman, her family, they don't know what's going on. They don't understand. I would not be surprised if GoFundMe removes this because she is a racist white woman who tried stealing a bike from a black man and she's a Karen. <laughs> and then she's going to have to learn the hard way why she'll have to go. But but maybe not. Maybe Maybe GoFundMe allows it. I'd be surprised if they do, to be honest. She's raised four grand so far of her $35,000 goal. Well, it's Look, all... Oh, go no, go ahead, go ahead. Well, no, I mean, it's interesting how this is getting flipped around. <laughs> People are making the argument that her calls for help were insincere. Okay, but one person is actually committing a crime on camera here, and it's not her. So why is she the person who all of the public attention is on? I also want to point out, because this was left out, and I also was not aware of this until I just learned this, she's also pregnant. Six months pregnant. Yes, mm -hmm. I said. Oh, you did. She's okay, six sorry. months. That totally pregnant. went over my head. And so I'm saying, like, what? When this young black man was was standing next to the bike and scanning it, the six months pregnant oh, woman, yeah, that's right. jumps onto the bike. <laughs> Give me that, dude. You'll these six month pregnant women stealing bikes from black men in New York is a real problem. It happens every day. It's and, all and the time. Apparently, yeah. Apparently, it was so shocking Racist that Ben crimes. Trump had to get involved. Yeah, for for weaponizing their white woman tears. They, like, what yeah. do they think is? I don't understand what they think is happening. Like, yeah. this pregnant woman tried taking a bike from this group of men. A, a race? <laughs> no, a racist pregnant one because they brought race into it. She was using her white woman tears. A racist white woman. It, like, these, they, pre they, these pregnant white women are victimizing minorities by stealing their bikes. It doesn't stop happening. Are they are they saying that 
this pregnant white woman saw a group a group of young black teenagers walked up to them and said give me that bike yeah. and then jumped on it right it's just wild to me that's what they're actually going for. and she had to prove her innocence yeah that's great because the media was saying she made them unsafe because ben crump called her racist unreal you know look man i i i, I, I do you expect me to donate to her as well <laughs> <laughs> like the, the penny thing I get, they're trying to put him in prison. You know what I mean? They did try destroying this woman's life. But this is why I said it before and I'll say it again. At what point do, are these people in these cities? This is this, this is what they how they choose to live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I get it. We've got to we've got to win these fights. Maybe maybe the reason we donate to her is because we want people to see that if you know, you, you will not be victimized by these 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 con artists. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the problem, right? I mean, you, you can donate to people who this kind of thing happens to, and I think that's a good thing. But when the people who perpetrate the lies don't face any negative consequences, it just keeps happening. Exactly. There's literally zero downside to spreading a lie like this. You Nothing. know, you know what I was thinking? We were we were talking about um, what were we talking about? We were talking about history earlier, and it's uh, partly because the work we're doing in West Virginia. These are small towns. And I was saying, like, any any story you've heard throughout history, just imagine it with 100 times less people. Because we're used to growing up in these big, dense mm. urban environments. Or we see, like, a, we see like a, a football game and there's 60,000 people. And we're like, wow. So when you think back to the Coliseum, you're imagining this huge, full Coliseum and the gladiators fighting. It's probably a couple hundred people. Yeah. Like, just a few hundred. These great battles of history and we're imagining. And it's like... I think I think what was, what was Gettysburg like ten, fifteen thousand or something like that? No, no, no. There Way more. more. More people died at Gettysburg than died in the entire Vietnam War. Well, I, oh I, wow. I, well, I knew that more um, Americans died in uh, the Civil War. It was something like seven hundred thousand Americans died in the the Civil War the civ overall. Yeah, yeah. More people wow. died at Gettysburg than died in the whole Vietnam War. There was fifty four thousand, fifty wow. some thousand people died in Vietnam, and there was more people that died at the. At oh Gettysburg. wow, yeah. It was one hundred sixty thousand people present at Gettysburg. That's yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people. Wow. So okay, Gettysburg Civil War, was. Civil War excluded. But I was re it was because I was like reading about some historical fight, and it was mentioning like this great battle, and it was a few hundred people fighting, and I was like, mm -hmm. oh wow. We, we, we think by today's standards, and maybe because of the Civil War, we assume there's way more people, but there were a lot less people before the 1900s, before the Industrial Revolution. Yeah, mm -hmm. before the, before the you know, I mean, we, we talk about all, like energy is life, and there's all this talk about, you know, limiting energy, and there's a lot of the green uh, initiatives and stuff. That's just going to cause mass death because energy is life. If you look at a chart of world population, it's not just the indu Industrial Revolution, it's oil. Oil is so energy dense that once people discovered that oil could be used in all the things that it can be, the population on Earth skyrocketed. I mean, it's like, it's literally like, it makes Lance's uh, left-handed chart look ridiculous. I mean, it's straight up. <laughs> left-handed chart. Well, so Colby, I'd like to ask, and obviously don't answer if this is not something you're public about, but uh, do you or have you ever had to live in one of these blue places? Yeah, yeah. I had to live in Oregon for most of my life and. You know, it wasn't as political. They didn't, you know, make it so, you know, so much division like there is today and and, and left versus right and trying to make it a white versus black thing to divide mm. this country more. So it was never like that until like a couple of years ago when Antifa started raiding it and, you know, it just became such a Democrat run state. So it's... It, this time and day is just so much different than, than it was, you know, a decade ago. And so you, you grew up there. Yeah. That must be really hard to see it fall apart. Yeah, it's it's really hard because I, I love that that state is such a beautiful you know state yeah a lot of mountains a lot of outdoor stuff to do and you know that's why i was born and raised and that's where all the hard work was put in to to get to where i am today the top of the mountain of the ufc world so you know i'll never go back now seeing it the way it's run i'll never go back i don't i don't even go to visit you know <clears throat> so yeah somebody it, somebody rough. did ask a good question they said why is that on the receipt the time is blurred out as if to imply that she went back later to find this bike. I'll say two things. The first, I'll say a couple of things. I have no idea. You want to pull this up? I have no idea why they uh, blurred the time on the receipt. That's the Daily Mail. But you wouldn't be able to find the bike. Like, if someone yeah. took the bike and then rode away with it, you don't know where it would end up. The other thing is, the New York Post says, the first receipt reviewed by the Post shows the bike was taken out before it was relocked one minute later, which Marino said is the bike seen in the video. The second receipt shows another bike being taken out a minute later, which is the bike she switched to. So the story was that when she w she she purchased the bike and tried to take it, they, they pushed her back in and wouldn't let her leave with it, which is why the receipt says zero, because it was, it was, uh, it was unlocked and then relocked right away. 
So that's the bike. And you can see the, the number on the on the bike in question. But other than that, I have no idea where the Daily Mail I'm 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 assuming it's the it looks like the Daily Mail is the one that redacted the uh the timestamp on it for some reason. Hmm. Yeah, no idea. Yep. Very strange. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.